In this video, we are going to take a quick overview of labor supply and discuss the supply side of it, um, specifically in the sports market. <coughs> Excuse me. So, in general, the salaries that have been paid to professional athletes in the four major North American sports um, were not always as high as they were now. They have risen pretty rapidly over the years. Um, over the last 25 years, the average salary of a Major League Baseball player um, increased more than fivefold from about $850,000 to about $4.4 million. Um, the, going back to 1991, uh, the average Major League Baseball salary was approximately um, 36 times per capita GDP. Jump to 2016, it's about 84 times per capita GDP. All right, so over that period, it went from 36 times to 84 times. Um, salaries in the other major sports in North America have also shown similar growth. So when you look at regular supply and demand, you have the price axis and the quantity axis. So the price ends up being the vertical, quantity is usually on the horizontal. In labor markets, the quantity axis refers to the hours of work that a person is willing to provide, and the vertical axis is the price per unit of time, which is usually referred to as the wage. Uh, now, in professional sports, we can't look at it the same way, um, and the reason why is professional athletes are not paid on a per hour basis. Um, so you can't use hours as the unit of time. With professional sports, they have a contract that is over some specified amount of time. And so we have here, we have a typical labor supply curve. And in B, this shows the quantity of fights a boxer has over his career. So this labor supply shows at each um, wage or amount paid per fight, um, how many fights that boxer is willing to do. Now, in team sports, the quantity of labor provided is typically for a given season. So the price variable is the amount paid per season or the salary. And so if you're talking about, um, for example, baseball or football, um, you'll be looking at the time frame of where the quantity would be the uh, number of years that the player is willing to pay. So there's a couple terms to talk about when we talk about labor supply. Um, the first is the labor leisure choice, and that is the trade-off that people have between working and taking leisure time. So in general, people choose how much to work based on the benefits and cost of an hour of leisure. And the reason why is that the opportunity cost of one more hour of leisure is one hour's worth of earning, which is the wage rate. So every hour of leisure you take, you are giving up money you could have earned. Okay? So that's why it's the opportunity cost. Now, as the wage increases, workers experience um, both an income effect and a substitution effect. So again, this is as wage rates rise. So with the substitution effect, um, when the wage rate goes up, the cost of leisure goes up because you're giving up more money whenever you take leisure. And so workers are sacrificing higher earn in, earnings when they essentially purchase um, leisure time. And so because it becomes more expensive to take leisure time, as the wage rises, the substitution effect, the substitution effect leads workers to work more. Now the income effect reflects the increased purchasing power that comes from higher wages. So assuming leisure is a normal good, meaning you want more of it, um, then workers are going to buy more leisure and work less as their income rises. So what that means is that as you make more money per hour, you might say, all right, well, yes, it's costing me more, but I don't need all this money and so with these higher wages I can make more money in a given time frame and so I'll work a little bit less. 
Now, because of these uh, income and substitution effects, um, you have a generally an upward sloping labor supply curve. Um, now, with non-labor income and the value of one's assets falls, the demand for all normal goods, including leisure time, falls. Um, but in general, you're going to have that upper sloping supply curve, and that curve is going to shift to the right or left, depending on factors that would increase or decrease your supply of labor. So that's just a quick overview of the labor supply.